So the first one here is x plus 4 equals 9. So we're solving for the unknown value here in the equation, which is x. To solve for x, guys, we have to remove whatever is beside it so that x is the only thing remaining on the left-hand side of the equation here. Of course, guys, as you see, 4 is the only thing connected to x or beside x on this side, so we need to get rid of the 4. Now, the operation connecting x and 4 is addition, so to remove the 4, we will perform the opposite operation, which is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. So then we're left with x being equal to 5. For the next equation here, guys, we have x minus 8 equals 2. So similar to before, guys, we need to have x as the only uh, variable. So we need to have x only. So guys, for this next one, so here, x needs to be the only thing remaining on the left hand side of the equation here. So we need to remove the 8. At the moment, we are subtracting 8, so to remove it, we'll be adding 8 to both sides of the equation. So then we're left with x being equal to 10. Let's take a look at the other two equations. So down here we have 3x equals 15. And of course we're solving for x. So that means we need to remove the 3. The operation connecting 3 and x is multiplication, so to remove the 3, we'll have to divide both sides of the equation by 3. And we're dividing because division is the opposite of multiplication. So we're left with the x equals 5. For the next one here, guys, this equation, we have x divided by 5 equals 7. Again, we're solving for x, so we need to remove whatever is connected to x on this side, which is the 5. So to remove the 5, we will perform the opposite operation of division, which is multiplication. So we'll just go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 5. Right, so then we're left with x being equal to 7 times 5, which is 35. Alright, let's move on down. So now, guys, we're looking at two step equations, right? So here we have 2x plus 4 equals 10. We're solving for x, right? So of course, we need to remove whatever is on this side with x so that x is the only thing that remains over here. So the first thing we're removing here, guys, is the 4. So, to remove the 4, we're going to subtract it from both sides of the equation. So then, we're left with 2x being equal to 10 minus 4, which is 6. The next thing we need to remove here, guys, is the 2 that we're seeing. So, to remove the 2, we'll be dividing both sides of the equation by 2. Right? And of course, we just divide it because the operation connected and x is multiplication, so to remove the 2, we have to divide. So now we're left with x being equal to 3. Let's take a look at the other one. So here we have 3x minus 5 equals 10, right? And guys, for the first uh, equation just now, you realize that as the name suggests, we're looking at two-step equations, so we only perform two steps to solve for x, so we'll do the same thing here. So the first thing we need to do, guys, is to remove the 5 that we're subtracting on this side. So to remove the 5, we'll be adding it to both sides of the equation. So then we're left with 3x on the left-hand side of the equation being equal to 15. The next thing we need to do here, guys, is to, of course, remove the 3 that we're seeing. And at the moment, guys, the x and 3 are connected by the operation of multiplication, so we'll have to perform the opposite operation, which is division, in order to remove it. So we'll just divide both sides of the equation by 3, so we're left with x being equal to 5. Alright, let's take a look at this one down here. So we have x divided by 3 plus 4 equals 9. Now the first thing we 
between your case is to remove the four that is being added. So because it's being added, uh, we'll remove it by subtracting four from both sides of the equation. Right, so then we're left with x divided by three equals nine minus four, which is five. The next thing we want to do here, guys, is to go ahead and remove the three. Now, given that we're dividing by three on this side here, guys, to remove the three, we'll have to multiply both sides of the equation by three. So guys, you'll notice that I'm not using the multiplication symbol. I'm just uh, inserting parentheses to represent the multiplication process. So bear in mind that that's another way you can uh, represent multiplication. So we're left with x being equal to 15. So now guys, we'll move to multi-step equation. So if you notice here, we have the unknown value x or the variable x on both sides of the equation. We also have numbers on both sides as well. So what we need to do here, guys, is to combine like terms or group like terms and solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is to group the terms that have the variable x in them. So to do that, I'll be subtracting. Let me just change the color. So to do that, guys, I'll be subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation here. So then we're left with, on this side, we have 3x plus 5 equals 11. The next thing I'm going to do here now, guys, is to go ahead and remove the 5 that we're seeing. So I'll be subtracting 5 which is the opposite of variation of the addition that's taking place there. I'm subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation. Right, so now we're left with 3x equals 11 minus 5, which is 6. Next, we need to remove the 3, guys. And as you know, the operation connecting 3 and x is multiplication. So to remove the 3, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. Right, so then we're left with x being equal to 2. Now I just want to pause here, guys, and show you how you can check to see if your solution is correct. Right, so what you would do is to take um, x equals 2, and wherever in the equation you have x, you'll replace it with a 2. So you're going to quickly rewrite the, the equation that you started out with. So then, we'll just have 6 times 2 plus 5 equals 3 times 2 plus 11, okay? So, now, just uh, bring down the size a bit. So 6 times 2 gives us 12, so we have 12 plus 5, and that's now equal to 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 11. Now on this side, we're getting 12 plus 5, which is 17, being equal to 6 plus 11, which is 17. Given that, we, when we substitute the value for x, which is 2 into the equation, we're getting the same number on both sides of the equation, guys. Which is 17 equals 17. That tells us that our solution is actually correct. Alright, so that's how we can check to see if our solution is correct. Alright, let's move on to the next equation that we have here. So guys, you can notice we have parentheses on both the sides of the equation. And the first thing we're going to be doing is to remove the parentheses that we're seeing. Let me just change the size of this pen here. Alright, so uh, we'll be removing the parentheses, guys, by applying the distributive law or the distributive property. And that property states that you'll use a term on the whole side, which in this case happens to be the number 4, to multiply the terms within the parentheses by. Now on the other side, we'll be using this 9 to multiply the terms in the parentheses by. So let's get that done. 4 times 2x 
gives us 8x. 4 times 3 gives us 12. On the other side, 9 times 3x gives us 27x. 9 times negative 5 gives us negative 45, or we end up with more minus 45. Now at this point, guys, right here, you'll notice that this part of the equation is starting to look like the one that we saw before it. So by now you should be thinking that the next thing that we need to do is to group our like terms and solve for x, right? Because that's definitely what we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to be doing is to first to group the terms that are numbers. So I'm going to start off by subtracting this 12 from both sides of the equation. So now we're ending up with 8x being equal to 27x minus 57. So what I'll do here you now guys is to group the terms that have the variable x in them. So I'm just going to go ahead and subtract 27x from both sides of the equation. Right, so then we're left with negative 19x. So then we're left with negative 19x on this side being equal to, over on the other side we have that, uh, negative 57 so at this point at this point guys of course to solve for x we'll just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by negative 19 right so then once we've done that we're left with x now being equal to positive 3 so for this one guys we're just going to go ahead and check to see if our solution of x equals positive 3 is correct so we're going to take the equation and we'll just substitute the value for x equals 3 into it so that means wherever we see x we'll replace it with our 3 so here we have 4 times 2x this is shaking equals 9 times 3x minus 5 so again remember guys x equals 3 and just right here just make a note that we're checking so we have 4 times 2 times 3 plus 3 equals 9 times 3 times 3 minus 5 so then we'll just quickly simplify whatever we have within the parentheses guys so that's going to give us 4 times 6 plus 3 being equal to 9 times 3, 3 is 9 minus 5 so we have 4 times 6 plus 3 and 6 plus 3 here in the parentheses gives us 9 on the other side we have 9 times again in our parentheses we have 9 minus 5 that's a gives us a 4. So we end up with 4 times 9, which is 36, being equal to 9 times 4, which is also 36. Now, given that we have the same number being equal to itself, guys, that tells us that we have the correct solution. Alright, so that tells us again that x equals 3 is indeed the solution to the equation. Alright, guys, so now we're looking at equations containing fractions. Alright, so for our first equation, we have 2 fifths x equals 5. Now to solve this equation, guys, of course, we'll need to have the variable, the unknown value x by itself on one side, right? So in order to do that, we'll have to remove the fraction. To remove this fraction, guys, the quickest way to do it is to simply multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the fraction itself. Now the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 over 2, so we'll just multiply both sides of the equation by 5 over 2. So that way we'll be able to quickly remove the fraction that's there. Okay, so now we're left with x being equal to 5 times 5 over 2, and here we can just go ahead and simply quickly uh, calculate this. So here we're going to get 
5 times 5, which is 25 And we're dividing 25 by 2 So that means that x is equal to 12.5 Alright And uh, I'll just do a quick check The one at the bottom here So you guys can see if 12.5 is actually the correct solution so that's we're taking the equation that we have there we're doing a quick check guys so the equation is two-fifths x is equal to five all right and we got x to be equal to 12.5 so that is two-fifths times 12.5 equals five so so guys, I'm just going to use the calculator and I'll just show you how to get it done, alright? So, I'm going to just bring up uh, So let me just get the calculator up and then I'll show you Okay Okay guys, so we're checking to see if this is correct, right? So I'll just be using the calculator as you see, I'm on desmos.com So, that's the calculator I'll be using so we're just going to go to the calculator here and put uh, this part of the equation in it because we're checking to see if we'll get the same number five that we're seeing on the other side of the equation all right so starting off here i'm going to just go ahead and tap the fraction icon that's right there so that way i'll be able to input the fraction and the fraction is two fifths so two fifths and then I'll just open parentheses here stop it then type in 12 oh let me just uh, do a backspace so that's 12.5 close parentheses so guys you'll notice that we're are you seeing it so we're over here over on this side you'll notice that the solution is displayed right here and that's a five right so a five is displayed right there so you're seeing that two fifths times 12.5 which is what we have here is giving us a result of five so we know that five is equal to five so of course given that we're getting the same number being equal to itself you know based on what we just did in our calculator here this tells us that our solution is correct now uh, just in case you want to find this calculator for yourself guys this is the best most scientific calculator so you would go to oh let me you would go to desmos.com and from the drop down um, box that is there at the top i'll show you let's say you're on google you want to find a decimal scientific calculator that i that i just use and i definitely recommend it if you don't have a scientific calculator for yourself and you need to do some calculations all right so here we'll just type in decimals scientific and it's popping up right there so i'll just stop it and then here it is guys scientific calculator decimals then you just start, tap it it's free to use so you don't have to lock in or anything to use it and this is what the, the face of it looks like right so you have the different uh, the same icons that you would normally see on see on your calculator you see them here here we have those ones tapping this gives you some variables to work with if you need those we have pi a square bracket and so on we have the function keys as well and so on so it's really really good calculator it's a really good calculator to use all right so all right let's just get back to the rest of the math work if you have any more questions about the decimals let me know down below okay all right let's close this and continue all right so given that we've checked i'll just move on to the next equation so the next equation here guys we have half x plus 2 equals 4 so of course here we're solving for x so uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to remove the 2 that's been added right 
so we're subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation so then we're left with half x equals 2 then we'll need to remove this fraction 1 half that we're using guys and we'll remove it by multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 1 half which is 2 over 1 or simply 2 but I'll write it as 2 over 1 so that's 2 times 2 over 1 <coughs> over here we have 2 over 1 okay so we're left with x being equal to 2 times 2 which is 4 4 divided by 1 is 4 so our solution for x is actually a 4 alright let's move on down to this next uh, question that we have here I'm going to go ahead and remove the checkbox guys so I have enough space to work with So here we'll be solving for the unknown value m that's in the equation. As you can see, we have a fraction on either side of the equation, and we also have parentheses. The first thing we're going to do, guys, is to remove the parentheses that we see here by applying the distributive property. Okay, so 1 fifth times m is m over 5. Uh, 1 fifth times negative 3 gives us negative or minus three fifths on the other side we have five over six okay so what we're going to do here guys is to remove the denominators that we're seeing so to do that we need to find the lcm of five and six so that's the lcm of five and six so LCM here guys represents lowest to common multiple. Okay, so for five, we're thinking about numbers that can be divided by five without leaving a remainder. So these are numbers like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, you know, on and on like that. For six, it's the same thing. We're thinking about numbers that we can divide by six without leaving a remainder. So we're looking at six, 12, 18, 24, uh, 30, 36, and so on. So, so from the numbers that I just mentioned, guys, you should have heard 30 popping out because that's going to be the number that we're working with. All right, so 30 and for 6 is the same thing, it's the same multiple. And that will be the, the value that's the lowest one that will work for both 5 and 6. So, what we're going to do now, guys, is to take that 30. And we're multiplying all the terms in the equation by so we're going to have 30 times m over 5 minus 30 times 3 over 5 being equal to 30 times 5 over 6 right so now we're just gonna go ahead and simplify 5 divided by 5 is 1 30 divided by 5 is 6 5 divided by 5 is 1 30 divided by 5 is 6. On the other side, 6 divided by itself is 1. 30 divided by 6 is 5. So now, guys, that we have these values, let me write them out so we can see them a bit clearer. Although you should be seeing them, but let me write them so that we have 6 times m minus 6 times 3 being equal to... Oh, uh, we have here 5 times 5, which is 25. So now we simplify further. 6 times m is 6m. Um, negative 6 times 3 will give us minus 18 here. Negative 18, all of that now is equal to 25. Okay. So now, uh, continuing to solve for m, we're going to add 18 to both sides of the equation. Alright, so we remove the 18. Okay. And we're now left with 6m being equal to 25 plus 18 and that gives us let's add it up guys 8 and 5 will be 13 then you add a 1 over here so we're ending up with a 43 so here we have 6m equals 43 right so to solve to uh, get m by itself we need to remove the 6 by dividing both sides by 6 so we end up with m being equal to 43 divided by 6 let's go ahead and check guys to see if this is correct let 
me just add another page here so we can do that. Alright, let's go. So we have m equals 43 over 6. So I'm just going to take the original equation. So I'm going to take the equation and rewrite it quickly. Wherever I see m, I'm going to put 43 over 6, so that's 1 fifth times 43 over 6 minus 3 should be equal to 5, 6. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pop over to decimals, right? I'm going to use a scientific calculator. I'm going to enter all of this in there and see what we're getting as a kind of shortcut step. Okay, so let's pull that up. Right, so we have our decimals and we are entering in that. So, so somewhere, so we are starting off by tapping the fraction bar so we have that one fifth open parentheses tap that and we have another fraction so we add the fraction i said fraction bar but just the fraction icon that's there so that's another 43 over 6 add that in close part no remove that parentheses add that minus 3 Close parentheses, we're getting 0 0.8333 continuous. So to see the fraction, guys, we just tap this icon that's there. And here we have the fraction, which is 5 over 6. So that tells us that our solution is actually correct. So this works out to be 5 over 6. So that's 5 over 6 is equal to 5 over 6. So given that that's the case, we know that our solution is actually correct so I'm just going to leave it in fraction form rather than to change this all rather than changing the solution to a decimal I'm just going to leave it as a fraction all right but if you want to see what the decimal is let me show you how you can get it with decimals okay so let me just clear this enter the fraction so that's 43 over 6 so that's it. This is our decimal that we're getting 7.1666 continues up to 7 minus we are saying there. So if you wanted to run it to one decimal place or two or three, then it's up to you. You could do that. Alright, so this is what we have here. It's our next fraction. So for this one, guys, we uh it's somewhat similar to the one before where to solve it we needed to find the LC the LCM, the lowest common multiple. So we'll need to do that. So taking a look at this equation that we have here, we only have fractions. There are no uh, parentheses to consider or anything like that. So uh, the first thing we want to do here is to find the LCM of 8, 4, and 5. So again, for the LCM, I'm just going to come up here and just add it in, right? So as I said, the LCM means lowest common multiple so that's what the LCM stands for so again uh, multiples are numbers that you can divide a number by no, so multi multiples of a number uh, are those numbers that you can divide a specific number by without getting a remainder okay so let's look at some multiples of 4 so multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 16, 20, 24, uh, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, a lot, okay? And it goes on and on, as you know, indefinitely, or it goes up to infinity. There's no end to like multiples. Alright, then you have 5, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I'll stop there. You guys should be noticing something happening. Alright, then we have 8. So that's 8, 16, uh, 24, 32, 40, 48. Okay, by now it should be jumping out at you guys, right? Because right here, 
it should be seen that okay for eight there's a 40 for five there's a 40 and for um four there's also a 40 so that tells you that that's the lcm you'll be using okay so the lcm is 40 so now that we have the lcm we're going to take it guys and we're going to multiply all the terms in the equation by so that's 40 times Okay, times 7, 8, x minus 40 times a quarter equals 40 times 4 fifths x plus 40 times 11 over 4. Let's simplify. Let's just bring this over a bit more.
what we should end up with is the same number being equal to itself. So let's see if that's happening. So I can replace the x that we're seeing with 40. So that's 7, 8 times 40 minus 1 fourth equals 4 fifths times 40 plus 11 over 4. So simplify it further and we're in by simplify right now what I'm doing what we're going to do right now is to uh, deal with the fractions that have the 40 beside them so simplifying that part so 8 divided by itself is 1 40 divided by 8 is 5 5 divided by itself is 1 40 divided by 5 is 8 so we simplify now we have 7 times 5 okay and that gives us 35 alright that's a bit better so we have that 35 minus 1 fourth equals 4 times 8, that's 32 plus 11 over 4. Alright, so again, as I said, to determine that the, the solution is actually correct, whatever we have, the value that we have on the left hand side of the equation must be equal to the value on the right hand side. So what we need to do is to simplify this 35 minus a quarter, we need to figure out what that is equal to. On the other side, this 32 plus 11 over 4, we need to also figure out what that's equal to. Okay, so on this side, 35 minus a quarter will leave us with uh, 34 and 3 quarters. Right, over here, 32 plus 11 over 4 will give us the same 34 and 3 quarters. Or uh, 34.75 if, if you are changing it to, to a decimal, being equal to 34.75. I'm just going to show you guys how you could quickly do this on the calculator, this part, to get these answers. So I'm going to be using a Desmos scientific calculator to show you guys that part. Okay, so in the calculator, I'm going to enter in this portion. So we're going to enter in 35 minus 1 fourth, so look at what I'm doing, guys. So again, we're entering 35 minus 1 fourth. I don't know why this pops up, but I can't get it off. Right, 35 minus a quarter, right? So I'm going to tap the fraction bar here, then enter in 1 fourth. And uh, that's giving us 34.75 as you guys are seeing. That's the same result I have down here. And then if I tap it, you'll see that 139 divided by 4. Uh, you know, they give, they give us that uh, improper fraction rather than a mixed one. Uh, for the 0.75, I want to show you that the 3 4 is the same 0.75. So I'm just getting the fraction bar, put in R3, then the 4. You guys are seeing that 0.75, okay, just pointing out. Alright, so then for the 32 plus 11 over 4, I'm just going to enter that in here. As well as so the 32. So this is the part I'm entering 32 plus 11 over 4. Multiply the numerator 
of the other direction. So, let's go. So, starting off, we'll use this stand over here and so I'll just draw the art so it's the more greater. So, we're taking this tin that is over here and we're multiplying. Seven. We're multiplying three x minus five by that seven. Now we we'll apply the distributive property to remove the parentheses and continue or the brackets. Some of you may refer to them as brackets. All right, ten times two x is twenty x. Ten times negative three is thirty. Negative thirty, as you see there. Seven times three x is twenty one x. 7 times negative 5 is minus 35 and negative 35. Now we'll just group like terms and continue to solve for x. So I'm starting off by grouping the terms that have numbers. So I'm adding 30 to both sides of the equation. So that leaves us with 20x being equal to uh, 21x minus 5. Then I'm um, Combining the terms with the x, so I am subtracting 21x from both sides, okay? So that's gone, and we're left with negative 1x. You can put the 1x if you want. I usually just put negative x, because it's just 1x. I just leave off the 1, being equal to negative 5. No, guys, we cannot have the unknown. We cannot have the unknown being negative, right? So. We have to get rid of this negative sign here. There are two ways to get rid of that negative uh, sign that's there. So, one is to multiply throughout by negative one or divide throughout by negative one. So, I'm just going to divide by negative one. So, then we're getting that positive x be equal to a positive five. So, x equals five is our solution. So, this is what we have, guys. Let's check it. Okay, let's check it. It's always good to check because sometimes the solution looks really correct, but then when you start checking, it's not. Alright, so let's grab the equation that we started off with and rewrite it. Alright, so we know that x equals 5, so wherever we see. Uh, the x will replace it with a 5, so we'll have 2 times 5 minus 3 divided by 7 equals 3 times 5 minus 5 divided by 10. Continue to simplify here. We have 2 5 stands, that's 10 minus 3 over 7 being equal to 3 5 is 15 minus 5 over 10. So we're getting 10 minus 3, which is 7, so that's 7 over 7 being equal to 15 minus 5, which is 10, so that's 10 over 10. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Oh, you guys weren't seeing that part, sorry. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and then 10 divided by 10 is 1, so we end up with the same number being equal to its tail. So, of course, we know that our solution is correct. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and share this video with someone who may also find this video useful, guys. Uh, on to my next video with you all. Take care of yourself. Wherever you are in the world, guys, remember to show yourself some extra, extra love. Alright? And take care of yourselves as best as you can. Until my next video with you all. Bye.